Hi, welcome to the ECAM channel. This is Yuan. In this video, Professor Gogozzi will talk about his research focus on vaccines and the energy storage applications. Let's have a look. Professor Gogozzi, could you give an overview about your research focus and the main area you specialized in? Well, uh, first, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me uh, to talk to you about uh, electrochemistry, publications, life, and everything else. And this is not an easy question to answer uh, because uh, I have a very large research team. Uh, we have right now a team at the moment uh, about 40 people, students, uh, postdoctoral researchers, senior scientists, visiting scientists who work on a variety of topics. And we collaborate with many people around the world on various topics. But at the moment, it's all around vaccines. For people who are not familiar with this class of material, those are two-dimensional carbides and nitrides of transition metals, basically few atoms seen layers of metals, titanium, moly, vanadium, connected by carbon, nitrogen, there can be oxygen inside. There are many of them. They come in a variety of flavors, different structures. We discovered them uh, with my colleague, Professor Michel Barzoum, and our PhD student, Michael Nagib, more than a decade ago. The first paper was published in 2011. By now, there are more than 50 material compositions in several different structures, plus a couple of dozens of solid solutions, and potentially about a thousands of materials possible in the system and infinite number if you consider solid solution, basically materials for mixed atoms. Naturally, such a huge family of materials can keep any number of people busy, uh, many more than uh, 40 people or 40 plus in the lab right now. So it's all around vaccines, but we not only discover materials, study new materials, methods of synthesis, characterization of properties, but we look into applications. And actually the electrochemical application, application in batteries, and then a bit later supercapacitors, were among the first explored for vaccines. And the reason is because for many years before vaccines, I was working on electrochemistry of nanostructured carbon materials. So we carried it over to vaccines using advantages of this class of materials. However, the research has expanded now far beyond the electrochemistry field. We are looking into optical properties of materials for application from electrochromic, but you see there is electrochemistry there, to using optical properties changes to monitor mechanism of electrochemical processes and energy storage. But it goes again beyond to electromagnetic interference shielding, to optical uh, filters and communication, antennas. We're also looking into biomedical applications. Applications, for example, uh, for wearable electronics to replace gold because vaccines have lower impedance with skin compared to gold and much more conducting compared to graphene, reducing graphene oxide people try to use. Uh, plus, there are quite a few other applications. Maybe we can talk about some of them later. But as you see, we have a large, very productive team uh, working on vaccines, their properties and applications to summarize what I said. Well, we can now go to the next question. Uh, I guess uh, you mentioned a lot of uh, applications of vaccines. Um, so what sparked your interest of vaccine in electrochemical applications specifically? Well, we actually discovered vaccines working on a project funded by U.S. Department of Energy on anodes for lithium-ion batteries. And the story is such, we expected materials that are currently used as precursors to maxine, so known max phases, considered to be carbide nitride layers, which sandwich monatomic layer of another element, like aluminum or silicon. So our assumption was that carbide, titanium carbide, for example, with silicon layers in between, 
may be able to store lithium ions, just like a graphite. And considerations that I had behind that were that silicon is known to be an alternative anode material, which much higher capacity, capable to take more lithium per atom compared to carbon and graphite. So we had a material with a high capacity silicon layer. And we had highly metallically conducting layers of titanium carbide and a layer structure somewhat resembling graphene. And one of my uh, PhD students, Murat Kurtoglu, did DFT calculation showing that lithium ions should be able to penetrate the structure. So um, I invited Professor Michel Barzum to write a proposal to the Department of Energy to get funding to explore titanium silicon carbide max phase as anode for lithium ion batteries. However, lithium didn't necessarily want to go that easily into this material. To open space, we tried to perform selective etching, like a basically cut into the material to let lithium go in. For many years, my group worked on making so known carbide derived carbons. So, carbons made of carbides, where we would remove selectively titanium or silicon or another element from carbides. So, Michael. PhD student who was working on the project tried different ways of etched. He did not succeed actually to etch titanium silicon carbide. My other student did it six years later. But he showed that when he etched titanium aluminum carbide in hydrofluoric acid, he was able to remove aluminum. And then the structure fell apart into two dimensional sheets that my postdoc who looked at them in TM first assumed to be graphene. And again, we knew it was possible to make two-dimensional carbon layers by again selective etching of max phases. But closer look showed it was not graphene. This was a first representative of a new and arguably the largest family of two-dimensional materials known titanium carbide maxine. So naturally, since we were working on a project for lithium-ion batteries. The first studies we did at Maxine were for applications of Maxine batteries. And this is how research started. Then one of my PhD students, Maria Lukatska, wanted to look at supercapacitor applications because she was working on her project on carbon supercapacitors. And she discovered that Maxines also are great for application in capacitive energy storage, electrochemical capacitors here. And of course, the rest is the history. We have been working on use of maxines in a variety of electrochemical applications, not only in batteries and supercapacitor, but also in uh, electrocatalysis, hydrogen evolution reaction, electrochemical sensors ever since. And this looks like a very promising field of research with the potential for applications. That's why we are not giving up. Thank you so nice, much. Professor Yuri. I think like you have bring a lot of opportunities and you are shaping the direction of the electrochemical application with Maxine's. The next question is, what are some of the most significant applications of Maxine's in energy storage and conversion and what advantages do they <coughs> offer over the other materials? Um, this is a good question. Let me actually start from the end. Advantages. We currently have a very large number of materials. Already a couple of hundred two-dimensional materials have been discovered. Graphene, dechalcogenides, a variety of oxides and other materials. Simple elemental silicine, germanine, others. And the question always arises here. Why to use a new material? It's a fun from the fundamental chemistry standpoint, material chemistry, making a new material, showing we can arrange atoms in certain structure in two-dimensional space. But the materials will become really materials, go beyond chemicals, only if have, they have some commodity value, when they have some applications. And we always go from synthesis 
to characterization to applications because properties of materials determine their applications. If we can do something with known, well-known, cheap, available materials, and a new material doesn't bring anything to the table, there is no point to use this material. So what do materials bring to the table? First, titanium carbide maxine, titanium 3 c 2 the first discovered, appeared to be a very good electronic conductor. If you make a film of titanium carbide maxine, it will be just after drying about 10 times more conducting compared to reducing graphene oxide, which is a widely studied, widely used in electrochemistry material nowadays. So, high conductivity. But, surface of, the surface of maxine is covered typically, at least in wet chemical synthesis, by oxygen, hydroxyl groups. By other techniques, it's possible to get halogens or chalcogens on the surface. So, consider two-dimensional metal with an oxide-hydroxide surface. So the surface looks like a clay or oxide. Inside it's a metal conducting electrons. And there is a transition metal on the surface, which can reversibly change the oxidation state. Moreover, when you take, for example, titanium or molycarbide maxine or vanadium carbide, elements which are vanadium, moly, titanium, which are widely used in batteries and energy storage, they can change oxidation state, but changing it does not kill conductivity, unlike again in graphene, when you go from graphene to graphene oxide and conductivity drops by six, seven orders of magnitude. So we have a material which combines property of metal and oxide. And this is really critical because we can provide electrons to the place where redox process happens. We can have surface redox without diffusion limitations, fast energy storage. And we can assemble these flakes just from pure water because of the surface termination. Maxines are dispersible just in water. No surfactant needed, no binder to assemble. Spread it on the surface, dry, and you get an electrode material. So, this property make it promising for redox energy storage. Pseudo-capacitive batteries, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. However, let me also mention where I believe Maxine can make a big difference. Those are passive elements for energy storage. Maxine may be a good material for batteries, but Look at this multi-billion gigafactories being built around the world. Do you feel it's realistic that we can quickly and easily change materials that are currently used in batteries? And with 2D materials, you really need to redesign the battery. Probably not. But when we can replace metal current collector with a 10 times thinner freestanding film of material, and moreover, material that suppresses, for example, lithium dendrite growth, this may be much more realistic because they can be implemented in the same design. So to keep a long story short, I believe there are opportunities for maxines in electrochemical energy storage in as active material, in basically storing energy by surface redox reactions and double layer storage. But there are also opportunities in passive elements as current collector, conducting additives, and uh, scaffold for sulfur in lithium sulfur batteries, and you can continue the list. Hope I have answered your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. That's a very nice overview of the advantage of Maxine's as well as the um, summary of uh, Maxine in battery and supercapacitor applications. I hope you enjoyed the video today. In the next video, Professor Gogossi will talk about electrochemical application beyond energy storage. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. The videos in our eCamp channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos to support our channel. 
Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.